Hello everyone, this is your old friend, Dark Lord Dixie, Lord of the Internet or whatever the hell. Anyway, just a really, really quick, no thrills, uh, unboxing video because I came home and yay, had my package from Kino Lober, Kino Lorber, sorry. Uh, my camera's a little crooked, let's see if we can fix that. That looks a little better. Anyway, I got my package in from Kino Lorber. If you've never heard of Kino Lorber, I was, I was with you a couple of weeks ago. Uh, shout out to my friend Brian Cohn to, for introducing me to Kino Lorber and my friend Eric Hyde who uh, put an order in before me and convinced me that, yeah. And uh, me, stupid procrastinator, I missed their Halloween sale, but they have great prices on some really, really obscure DVDs all the time and Blu-rays all the time so it's not you, you don't have to wait for a sale even though I probably would have spent another thirty dollars if the sale had been on because there were so many DVDs I did not order because they had won up a couple of dollars but it's like a five dollar DVD versus nine dollar DVD it's still a great effing sale but I'm gonna some of the I, I just got what I felt like I had to have and some of the others I am going to wait until they have a sale or uh, until I can't convince myself to wait anymore. So without further ado, let us get into this because I'm already a dude too long and I was, this is going to be quick because I want to go do more stuff. I want to watch some of these. This is not open. See, I shit you not. See, I've just been cutting off. This is not open and I want to watch this. And if you are watching this video on the YouTube, uh, on the new Facebook channel I've set up, my old Facebook, I'm still in jail for like four more days. So if you want to be a bud, you can like share this on my old profile because I can't. Facebook fucking sucks. And I I got 20, a 30 day suspension for using profanity. Believe that shit. That's awesome. So now it is open and inside we have crumpled newspaper, which is fucking awesome. And since I'm doing eBay sales, I can, uh, I can use crumpled newspaper or uncrumpled newspaper. Um, some reason it reminds me of unknown hints on here's my here's my shipping list which I'm not gonna look at I remember some of the movies I bought I don't remember everything that I bought so I will be somewhat surprised with the rest of you are kind of like oh yeah I forgot I got that oh right on the very top what do we have oh. now, this movie is a classic and I owe Stephen King I think for making me fall in love with this movie he talked about it in Dance Macabre that's macabre that's macabre i can't remember if i'd seen it before that or not but he was the the defining factor of me watching this again if i had seen it before as a child i've seen so many old films as a child that i simply forgot a lot of them but after i read that's that's macabre i had to watch this again and kind of watched it in a new light from what steven had said about it and fell in love with it this is x the man with the x-ray eyes can you see that can you see that with the great uh, iconic Ray Milan. Um, let's see who else. Uh, da, 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 da. Harold J. Stone, John Hoyt, Don Rickles. Don Rickles, I forgot. He has a very cool part in there. Directed, produced, and directed by Roger Corman. Uh, sippy sippy, by the way. I'm off work, so I can sauce it just a little. Um, Diana Vandervus. Also, what is the theme of all of this? If you've never seen this, and I'm taking probably a lot of y'all, y'all kids haven't. This is um, the story of a scientist who invents eye drops. Um, to the, I think the idea is to cure blindness. So stop me reading, just for my memory here. I'll read it in a second. Um, and um, it works. It makes his eyes better and better and better. And eventually, he starts being able to see through clothes. And we get all the, well, this was like in the 1963. But we, we play around that thing about him being able to see through clothes as much as they can in 1963 on a movie. Um, but his eyesight keeps getting better and better. So it's, uh, eventually, he's, he can't even close his eyes because he's seeing through his own eyelids. He's seeing through buildings. And he eventually gets to the point where he's seeing through the fabric of reality. And it's like um, the something beyond our reality. What is that? Is that God? Is that Stephen King? It. Uh, outside the, the, the realm of the Dark Tower. Um, 
is it the dimension of hell, Hellraiser? Who knows what the fuck he's seeing. But he's seeing beyond our reality, and it drives him insane. And we have this final great scene, and a rumored scene that was cut because it was simply too disturbing, or I thought it was too disturbing for audiences. Let's, let's read the back of it because then see what I missed and all this shit. Dare to look into the eyes of madness. Fantastic tale of heart-pounding suspense. This harrowing and terrifying sci-fi shocker will fascinate horror film fans. Starring Ray Milan of The Premature Burial. It starts. It charts the startling transformation of a doctor so blinded by ambition that he dares to glimpse eternity. When the brilliant Dr. Xavier, Milan, Dr. X, Dr. Xavier, not Professor X, um, concocts a serum to improve human sight. He stumbles upon a formula for x-ray vision. Inspired by its awesome medical potential, but shunned by his short-sighted colleagues. Short-sighted colleagues are always shunning shit. Uh, he's... <laughs> the doctor tests the potion on himself, only to discover that his ability to see through walls, clothing, and flesh is slowly eclipsed by an... In Big grammar error here. Eclipsed by an, not and... Insatiable desire to look still further, even if it means seeing more than any mortal can bear. Featuring wonderful direction by the great Roger Corman, you know Roger Corman, if, you know. and a strong supporting cast that includes Harold J. Stone of The, the Wrong Man, John Hoyt from Blackboard Jungle, and comedy legend Don R Rickles, Don Rickles, I don't know, of Run Silent Run Deep. Um, Corman, of course, Death Race, Death Race. 2000, the original Cannonball, uh, the guy's like a B-movie legend, so if you don't know him, then you're not a fan of B-movies. This, I'm assuming, was considered a B-movie at the time, but I mean, this is a fucking classic, and this is really cool, and I don't remember what I paid for that, but it was well worth it! Let's see, what we have, we have a Blu-ray next, because Kino Lumber does do Blu-rays and DVDs at wonderful discount prices. This one, this motherfucker out right here, this one got me excited when I saw it here. I don't have this. I have a poster for this, but I don't have this on DVD, VHS, on no shit right here. It is Sugar Hill. And no, not the one with Wesley Slipes because he bet on black one minute too many times and it came up red. Meet Sugar Hill and her zombie hitmen. The Mafia has never met anything like them. Sugar Hill. Um, Sugar Hill, this was like the 70s. Let me get you a date here, 1974. This was a black exploitation zombie film. After Romero had rewrote the rules on zombies, and everybody's like, after Romero, all the zombies, headshot, Walking Dead, blah, 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 blah. This goes back to the Jamaican style zombie um, that was prevalent before Romero. It was the only zombie before, before Romero came along. So this is kind of like a, a throwback, even though it was in the 70s. Um, basic story Sugar Hill, beautiful woman, her. Husband, boyfriend, fiance is killed. The mobster's trying to take over the, his business. She goes to an old uh, Jamaican cursed woman, um, voodoo priestess, who gives her the power to summon zombies to take her revenge. Well, let's read it and the myth the myth. Pray you never cross a woman out for revenge and her squad of zombie hitmen. When a black nightclub entrepreneur gets taken out by the mob, his girlfriend, Sugar. Hill, played by Marky Bay, who was one of the most beautiful women of that era. I mean, I'll put her up with Raquel, and Raquel is fucking stunning. Um, Soledad Miranda, who we're going to talk about in a minute. We're going to talk about Raquel, too. Um, Marky Bay, and she's still a beautiful woman. The last time I saw a photo of her, I believe she's still alive. Um, but, not an entrepreneur, gets taken by his girlfriend, Sugar Hill, played by Marky Bay, calls upon the voodoo high priest Baron Samdi to summon up the undead to carry out an unholy plan for revenge, period. Packed with horror, action, and loads of 70s funk, Sugar Hill will slay you. Also starring Robert Quarry of Count Yorga the Vampire. Yes, Robert Quarry. Great kind of unsung horror icon of the 70s. Uh, um, he was in Dr. Five Rises from the Grave. Uh, he was in um, Count Yorga, The Return of Count Yorga. He was in Madhouse with Vincent Price. Uh, he played one of the main bad guys. Uh, Sugar Hill, sorry, Marky Bay, Robert Quarry, Don Pedro Coley, co-starring Betty Ann Reyes, Richard Lawson, Zara Cully, 
Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta, trying to find out who directed this because I don't know. Written by Tim Kelly, directed by Paul Meslansky. All right, this is the Blu-ray. I think I paid thirteen dollars for that. That that ain't that ain't shit for this. This is a classic. This should be a classic. This is a cult classic. If um, if you haven't seen this, you need to get get the fuck on it. If you're a zombie fan, get the fuck on it. If you're a black exploitation fan, get on it. If you are a fan of beautiful women, get on it. Um, whatever. Watch this damn movie. Alright, next in the box. What's in the box? Never gets old. Speaking of the wonderful Raquel Welch, we have... Bah, 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 the movie that made her famous. And the movie that... Uh, in the book, Shawshank Redemption. I'm pretty sure the, the, the poster for this movie played heavily in Shawshank Redemption. Or Rita Hayworth in the Shawshank Redemption. I can't remember if it was the movie or the book that used the poster. One of them used it, one of them didn't. Anyway, this is a classic. I remember first seeing this one. Jeez, I, a long time ago. I was a kid. This was like 1966. This was before I came along. But I seen it. We had a television set up out in the front yard. My family was like doing a fish fry, I believe. My uncle who has passed away, my father has passed away, our family. And we watched this on the TV. And blows you away if you're a kid which um i was probably like 9 10 11 I, I don't know how fucking old i was but if you're anywhere near a, a, your teen age years that right there that that knocked you off that knocked you out of your socks back into your socks and to walmart to buy new socks because it totally like ripped the shred out of them it knocked you so fucking hard this is a brand new 4k restoration in this vivid view of prehistoric life, a man from the vicious rock people, Tumac, played by John Richardson, Black Sunday, is banished from his home, but soon finds himself living among the kind, gentle shell people. There he falls in love with the beautiful Luna. Or is it Lona? Lona. My eyes! From rock, uh, the beautiful Raquel Welch from 100 Rifles, Fuzz, and Fathom. Everybody knows Fathom. We're going to talk about some other shit later. In this... In the role that made her an international sex symbol and a major star, the two decide to strike out on their own, living by their wits in a deadly land of treacherous beasts and unknown dangers, leading to a thrilling climax by the edge of an angry volcano. The stunning prim primeval, create primeval creatures were created by the legendary special effects wizard Ray Harryhausen. Now, if you're a fan of horror and sci-fi, from the 60s, 70s, you know Harryhausen. You know, you know the beast from Without Fathom. That's yeah, one I can remember. One million years BC. A true science fiction classic was directed by Don Chafee of Jason and the Argonauts and featured a strong supporting cast that included Martine Beswick of Thunderball. I think um, yeah, I'm not gonna guess that shit. Robert Brown of The Living Daylights. Percy Herbert of Too Late the Hero and Yvonne Horner of Prehistoric Women. The 100-minute international cut and the 91-minute U.S. cut are both included on this Blu-ray. Double score! Dude, seriously, like, everybody knows Raquel Welch now, unless you're so young that you don't know Raquel Welch and you're, you need to know who Raquel Welch is. This made her a star. This made her an international star. Uh, no one really knew uh, Raquel Welch before um, this movie came along and then it came along and then everybody knew her. I'm sorry, I was getting a push on my fucking phone. Um, I'm, and I can't turn it on airplane mode now. It won't let me pop it up. All right, but anyway, Raquel Welch, if you see some little shit, if you see some shit pop up on my screen, go tell them that they suck for interrupting this shit. All right, I have a couple of more. Let's see what is next because I can't tell from the back of the TV. Oh. <laughs> this one is one that I have not seen, but I heard about this a couple years ago when I was buying way too many movie posters and I forgot to put my uh, extra poster. I had to take one down. I forgot to put one up. This is a movie, if you love the Kingy Kongy, which I love the Kingy Kongy, you might have to see this one or you might not. This is APE, A-P-E, which stands for something primate entity. It's a King Kong knockoff from, I believe, South Korea. See, ape, and it's spelled A, period, P, period, E, period. 
defy the jaws of giant shark. Their grammar is awesome. Destroy a teeming city. Demolish an ocean liner. Vanquish monster reptile. I need to turn the lights on here, but maybe we can make it. It's getting dark in here. It's starting to make, look like an Eric Morris video. Um, newly remastered in 3D and HD, a freighter peacefully glides the still waters of South Pacific night. Their cargo, a recently captured 36-foot ape, a giant fist comes up through the deck, sending the sailors sprawling, and in a matter of seconds, the APE, attacking primate monster, and they highlight the E in monster, is loose. That's reaching for it, folks. Uh, after battling a very large snake and a giant white sharp, APE defies the jaws of the great white and is the victor. American actress Joanna Kearns from Growing Pains, holy shit, uh, arrives in South Korea to appear in a film at the same time. APE has also arrived and lays waste the city of Inchon and continues his march forward, destroying everything in his path. Paul Letter from I Dismember Mama, another <laughs> fascinating cult horror movie of uh, the past, co-wrote and directed the cult classic that needs to be seen to be believed and which co-stars Hollywood veteran Alex Nicole, the man from Laramie and the Screaming Skull. And it's Joanna Kearns without Kirk Cameron. She was on the Kirk Cameron. Yeah, yeah, she was. Yeah, anyway. But this is, I, I just had to watch this. This is probably a shitty as hell movie, but I had to see it. It's, when you got to see to believe, well, you know, I'm going to see it. Hopefully I'm going to believe it. Oh, let me flip the lights here. Word to the wise, cockroaches hate light. Uh, sippy, sippy. If you get that reference, ha ha, if you don't. I think this is the last one. I'm excited about this one. I'm pretty, I know what this is unless I made a last different mind change when I was placing an order. I have not seen this movie. And yes, yes, 100 rifles. You're like, what? What the fuck? 100 rifles? What the fuck is that? I don't know what that is. It's a Blu-ray. That's what it is. 100 rifles. Stars. Jim Brown. Raquel Welch and Burt Reynolds. You know them names. All right, don't tell me you don't know who Burt Reynolds is. Don't tell me you don't know who Raquel was. We just talked about Raquel. Jim Brown, a great uh, NFL, former NFL player, actor, black exploitation actor, actor in serious films. Um, I haven't seen this. Don't know a hell of a lot about it. Uh, I got it because it stars Burt Reynolds, Jim Brown, Raquel Welch, and Soledad Miranda, even though she's not listed on the cover, which she could. This is one of the last films Soledad Miranda did. Soledad Miranda is one of those most beautiful women in the world back then. Uh, tragically killed when she was 27 years old in a car accident. This was made in 1969, I believe. Yeah, 1969. Soledad Miranda was killed August of 1970. This was like her second to last film. If you've watched any Jess Franco movies, you've seen Soledad Miranda. Uh, the Devil Came from Akasaba, Count Dracula. Uh, several more of his like more seamier horror films she was in. Beautiful woman, uh, model, singer. Um, anyway, Jim Brown from El Condor, Raquel Welch from Fathom, and Burt Reynolds from White Lightning set the screen ablaze in this intense and muscular western. It's a muscular western. Bursting with rousing nonstop action and humorous charm, when American police officer Brown comes to Mexico to arrest a criminal, Reynolds, for robbery, he finds himself detained by both the Native American revolution against the Mexican government and the luscious figure of the thief's sidekick, Welch, Raquel. As the government steps up its plan of total extermination of the Native Americans, the stolen loot buys needed weapons for the battle and the American policeman ends up joining the fray. Tom Grace of Blackheart a black break heart pass, sorry, directed and co wrote this rousing, rousing action adventure with Clara Huffaker of Real Conscious, based on a novel by Robert McLeod, The Appaloosa. The stellar cast includes Fernando Lamas, from you know, Fernando, that was like Lorenzo's daddy, you little marvelous, um, from Javaro, Dan O'Herlihy of Robocop, Spaghetti Western legend Aldo Sombrero of Navajo Joe. 
and soap opera icon Eric Braden, who played Victor Newman of The Young and the Restless. And they don't mention Soledad Miranda. So they ought to have their fucking ass kicked. And she's not even on the back credits, but she is in this motherfucking movie. Pardon my language. Uh, don't put me back in Facebook, you know. Uh, anyway, that's it. That's my five movies from Kino Lover. One, two, three, four, five. Five movies that I just don't need that any movies, but what the fuck? I got them. All right, well, that's it. Anyway, it was a quick unboxing. I am now going to uh, la, 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 finish my small amount of alcohol, play some Shadow of War, and then maybe go see Justice League since I'm not at work. If I don't drink too much, if I drink too much, then I'll play Shadow of War all night. It's like that. Anyway, this is your friend and mine, Lord Dixie, Alan Alverson, signing off. Until later, as I hit the little button, goodbye.